we should have the chapter notes for chapter 2.5. And uh, again, the vocabulary is up to you, but you should catch that in the video. All right, so a literal equation is an equation that has more than one variable. A formula is an equation that states a relationship among quantities and are considered to be special a special type of literal equation. Sometimes we have to add, subtract, multiply, and divide by a variable. When this happens, we treat them the same as we would any number. And I'll tell you more about that in just a second. I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. Taking this first problem here, oh, I hate these things, so let's ignore that. We're going to ignore that for a second. 10x plus 5y equals 80, where x equals 3 and 6. Now, we could just go ahead and plug x equals 3 and x equals er, uh, 6 uh, in there and solve it. But before we do that, we're going to try and figure out what the value of y is first. So if I want to solve this for y to begin with, I need to get rid of this 10x. And the only way to get rid of this 10x is to subtract it from both sides. Again, treating it like a number, just like any number. If I, do, if I subtract 10x from both sides, excuse me, if I subtract 10x from both sides, I'm left with 5y equals 80 minus 10x. Now I can divide both sides by 5 divide everybody over here by 5 and I'm left with y equals and since I'm dividing everything by 5 80 divided by 5 leaves me with 16 and 10 divided by 5 is 2 so 10, uh, 16 minus 2x. Now now that I have y solved for it's really easy for me to go ahead and plug in that 3 in for x so let's let's find out when x equals 3 What's the value of y? Well, y equals 16 minus 2 times 3. And notice I put 3 in parentheses. I really suggest that you, whenever you're plugging in a number into any of these literal equations or formulas, make sure you plug them into an open set of parentheses. It's, it's much more difficult to lose uh, negatives that way. So to simplify this a bit, we get y equals 16 minus 6. And 16 minus 6 is 10, so y equals 10. So the value whenever x equals 3, y is 10. And we can leave this as an ordered pair, as uh, an ordered pair, uh, 3 comma 10. Or we could just simply state x equals 3, y equals 10, and put, a, put that around it. Now what is it whenever x equals 6? Well, we can, so we can certainly go to find that out. So now we have y equals 16 minus 2 times 6. And that would be y equals 16 minus 12. And 16 minus 12 leaves us with 4, so y equals 4. Oh, excuse me. All right. So for a problem like this, uh, there's no other, there are only. Um, there are only variables in these. And th this would be what we consider a formula in a sense that we only have variables and this is just a relationship amongst these variables. Now the the idea here is to solve for x. That's what the goal is. Well I notice here I have two terms with x in there. If this were 4x plus 3x equals you know, c, well we would combine the like terms, right? I have an x here and an x here, and I'd end up with, um, uh, let's see, 4 plus 3x, right? And that's equal to c. Well, I'd know that I have 7x's equals to c. But here, with ax minus bx, I have only variables, right? So in order to get this together, in order to uh, uh, solve for x, I need to get these uh, in some way, I need to f I need to uh, turn these two terms with x in it into one term with x. Well, just like we did over here, this is sort of like the um, this is sort of like the distributive property, right? If I distribute this value of x to both of them, if I distribute this here, then I'd end up with the original. 
So what I want to do is I want to factor the x's away. I'll have x here. I'm going to factor that out. And I'm left with a minus b equals c. So now I have x times a minus b equals c. Well, I'm going to treat a minus b just like I would any number. And over here, I would divide by 7. right? I would divide by 7. So I'd have x equals c over 7. Well, now over here, I need to divide by the quantity a minus b. So I'm going to divide both sides by that a minus b. And this goes to 1. So I'm left with x equals c over the quantity a minus b. Yeah. OK, what is the radius of a circle with a circumference of 64? Well, um, you can look up the the uh, you can look up the formula for circumference, but one thing I do know is that circumference is equal to two pi times the radius. So this is the formula for circumference. Circumference is equal to two times pi times the radius, or two times the radius times pi. Um, it's quite it's often referred to as um, pi times the diameter. Well, the diameter is 2 times r. So this is a formula that I want to use because it's asking for radius. So I'm going to solve this for radius. And what's happening in between the radius and these numbers is, is multiplication. I want to get rid of that with division. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2 pi. Divide both sides by 2 pi. And now I get r equals the circumference divided by 2 pi. Right, see so it's c over two pi, and on the right hand side I've been left with r. Now it's okay to switch sides of an equality, right? Because four equals four. Well, I could put four here or four over here. It doesn't matter. So it is a okay to switch sides here. Well, now if the circumference is sixty-four then I'm going to put 64 in for C. So now R equals 64 divided by 2 pi. And 64 divided by 2, I know to be 32. So R equals 32 divided by pi. And it asks us to use 3.14 as an estimate for pi. So I'm going to say approximately, because it's an estimate, it's not equals, it's an approximate 3. Uh, excuse me, 32 divided by 3.14. Now we could do that in our calculator. And to be honest with you, I don't know. Like... And notice how I stopped right there at those two digits because I stopped at two digits because I had two digits here. So 10 point. It's approximately 10.19. I made, uh, I, I rounded, so I had to use this approximate there. So 10.19 would be my answer.